If your creative push has helped you, you can help the show by becoming a patron on Patreon. For $20, $10, $5, or $1 a month, you can not only show your support of the podcast, but also do so much to help to cover all the costs. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash Patreon to find out all of the goodies that you can get when you become a patron at each of the levels, and thank you in advance for helping the show. Your Creative Push, episode 186. If you don't have a goal, you can't score. Have big dreams, have goals, set a goal. Go and work hard. Like, no excuses anymore. Just get at it. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Andrew T. Kearns. Andrew is a freelance photographer and videographer based out of Washington. His career is spent behind a camera, whether that's filming or taking photos, and it seems that his free time is spent the same way. His latest project has been traveling and living on the road out of his car, all while documenting his experiences through photography, social media, and more recently, his vlogs. With a crowd reach of 450,000 people, he has built a significant influence behind his name and continues to grow his audience rapidly, alongside working with well-known and respected brands. Uh, And Andrew, man, first of all, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I was wondering if we could start with you telling us a little bit about how you got to the point you are today in in both your kind of photography and your videography uh, career. Sure. Back in my senior year of high school, on my first semester, I just took a class Digital Photo 1, and I just really enjoyed it. Uh, I started shooting photos, and for a graduation gift, I got like just a little DSLR set up, a Canon uh, 60D with the kit lens, and I just kind of rocked that for a few years, maybe upgraded my lens in there somewhere, and then two years ago, really started taking it, actually about two years and two days ago, really uh, decided to start pushing forward on it and take it more seriously. And ever since then, I have been doing that full-time. Now, you said two two years and two days. Why that specific date? How do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was January 3rd. I went on a hike with a few buddies of mine, and one of my buddy invited a guy named Samuel Elkins. Uh, if people know my work, they probably know who he is as well. We are good friends. He was doing what I was doing before I was doing it, and he's a huge inspiration uh, and now a very, very good friend. But, yeah, he going on that hike was probably – one of the best decisions I ever made because I got to meet him. And that day I had no idea how much going on that hike would have impacted to where I am today. So I love it. Yeah. We, we talk about on the show a lot, just the idea of just saying yes, being a yes man or a yes woman and just saying mm-hmm. yes to opportunities. Cause you never know where it might lead you and what, what path it might lead you down. Um, so that's awesome. That's an awesome story. And, uh, yeah, yeah you, you really hit the ground running cause uh, two years you said, and, and you've yeah. built a very big following. And, uh, uh, for anybody that's creative, you don't even have to be a photographer, but anybody that's listening to this podcast basically, uh, can really look to your YouTube channel as well for that kind of inspiration. And I, I especially appreciate your recent videos about kind of new year's resolutions. Um, Cause you know, new year's is like kind of a self-reflective time for most people, but for you, it's like supercharged cause your, your birthday, yeah. uh, happy belated birthday, by the way, um, thank you, thank you. Uh, it comes between, uh, Christmas and new year. So it's very self-reflective for you. So I really appreciated that video. So can you talk a little bit about your resolutions? Cause I thought that was a really good, uh, good expression of, of, of what to kind of like look for in your new year. Yeah. So my resolutions really, uh, there's a few of them. Uh, one of them is like run very firm set resolution, very specific is making 200 vlogs this year. Um, right now I'm just doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, obviously if I kept doing that, that would put me just above 150. So at some point in the year, I'm going to have to speed it up and I'm okay with that. It's just, uh, I just switched, uh, programs recently on editing my vlog. So I'm just learning all that and I think they're going to get a lot better soon. Um, but yeah, 200 this year. I think that's just healthy for anyone as a creative just to challenge yourself to do something like that, whether it's every day, whether it's X amount in a year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a big goal of mine is to exercise regularly, which I just literally <laughs> 20 minutes ago got back from a run. Uh, yeah. I've been doing it every day since the new year started. And I can tell you now it's it's insane the benefits combining that with another goal of drinking more water and eating healthier uh i can't tell you i've been drinking more water i just i i I just always for it too but i have 
been eating a lot healthier and um combining exercise with that like it, it's insane like i sat down the other day and worked for literally probably 14 hours of just like editing stuff and getting stuff done set up and that that was the morning i woke up and realized i missed out because uh, i was working till like 4 a.m uh and i missed our interview what we had scheduled first <laughs> no worries yeah so i find focusing on work and stuff a lot easier nowadays uh, after starting doing that. Another one is to hike once a week or so. Just get out. Uh, it's it's super beneficial. I haven't done that this week because I'm currently the truck is in the shop and the Prius has a flat tire. So I'm kind of stuck at home, but it's fine. It's what it is. Um, but getting out in nature, getting out hiking, like it is so beneficial for anyone really, and especially me, because uh, that's that's what I do. Like, I just love being outside and that. And when I start kind of excusing that and like making excuses to not go hiking, it shows pretty shortly after my mood changes my like it just does. It definitely has an effect on my on me as a person and my attitude. Another one is to think less and do more. That can also be said as um, don't overthink stuff as much and just l less thinking and more action. Uh, it's easy to think about all these ideas and have these ideas but uh, everyone has ideas like I have a bazillion ideas, like everyone listening to this podcast probably has a bazillion ideas, but those don't matter until there's action behind those ideas. You know, like I think that is really one thing I need to really take to heart this year is, hey, if I have this shoot idea, like, OK, stop imagining it in my head and going out and doing it. Hey, I want to like live out of my car for most of this year. Like, OK, cool. Like and take action. Do it. You know, I think that's huge right now for me. Because I, uh, I, I don't do that. I overthink stuff too easily or I think about and romanticize ideas too much other than action. Um, and then another simple one is just to learn to cook. doesn't have to be like Rachel Ray status or anything, but <laughs> I, I think being able to cook for myself would be very beneficial because it's easy just to go out and buy a salad or something. But yeah. Yeah. I love all those, uh, those resolutions. They all come, come down to... I think excuses, which is uh, something that mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people listening struggle with the, the, those excuses, you know, you just get in your head and, and the more um, th that's why I think that the best advice that you gave there is think less and do more because the more you think about this thing, this, this project or this, this work that you have to do to get to the point that you want to be at, the harder it is to do. And uh, I think basically all your goals kind of are a way to get past those excuses, like setting those big goals, you know, 200 videos is a lot. I did, I did 103 uh, or 185 ish episodes in a year. And it's mm -hmm. like, looking back, it's like so much work, but yeah, I did it. Like if you set the, the high goal, you can easily do it. And, uh, Absolutely. A, a, the best way to do that is, is what you're doing. Like changing your lifestyle to benefit that, like exercising, eating healthier, you're a machine, you know, like you, you, you need to fill your machine, your body with good stuff so that it is easier for you to kind of get past those excuses and just get to work. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing once you start prioritizing that. Uh, how much of a difference you can tell. Like I am so much more energetic, so much more aware and focused. It, it's really changing the game and I'm excited to yeah, go after these goals this year with that. Awesome, man. We uh, can't wait to follow you. Well, going back to your YouTube channel um, where people can follow you, have you always been that open and honest? Because I, I, I feel like you are uh, kind of an open book. On your birthday during your video, you you know, we're talking about eating healthier and, and all that stuff. And then you stop at McDonald's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, most, yeah. I think most people would just edit that out. They wouldn't record themselves doing that. But I think it's important to kind of be an open book. So have you always been that kind of open just about the things that hold you back? Or did that start? Like, did that take practice to get to there? Uh, no, I'm I'm pretty open for the most part. That's just kind of how I am. I don't really try to hide too much. And I, I think that's a big case of like kind of how I look at the internet and see where it is and where it's going. And like, I just think there's a big movement for authenticity in the future. Like I, and kind of happening right now, like, like everyone kind of shows the highlights of their life on the internet. But I think Casey Neistat was a really good example of that, that mm. the authenticity is kind of wanted almost it's like it's and i think people really enjoy that for with my vlogs because i mean i might vlog like a really cool trip to iceland or i might vlog like me running errands one day you know it's like right. it very much varies and i think 
I don't know. I think people kind of latch onto that uh, because there's a big lack of authenticity on social media today. Um, so I just want to be kind of the forefront and displaying that and just showing people, hey, like, be yourself, even if you're like, maybe not perfect, you know, because we're all not perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I was I was just watching a video last night. I, I can't remember any details about it except for as a, a discussion about millennials. Um, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes page, yourcreativepush.com slash uh, Andrew T. Kearns. But one of the things they talked about was how exactly like you said, especially millennials only put out these, these highlights, you know, the, the, mm. the, the great meal you just had and all the good moments. And I think to get to those bad moments is, is a hard thing, but that's the way that connections happen in life. Uh, and I think that we kind of, as a whole, put that aside. You know, we, we don't really look towards those bad moments to make those kinds of connections. That's what, that's what this podcast is about. And I think that's what you try to do in your YouTube channel as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cause I mean, (laughs) resistance and all the things that kind of hold people back, not in just the creative pursuits, but in life, you know, they're dirty, (laughs) you know, they're, they're gross, they're grimy. So uh, what are some other things that, that kind of hold you back? A big part of it is just all the, like, I guess more lately, I've been doing a lot more work rather than play, kind of. Mm. Uh, And I have definitely felt it. I was kind of just in this, kind of in this funk the past month or so. And I was just feeling very uninspired and questioning a lot of what I do. And really, like, the best way to do it is just change up things. Like, I kind of changed my eating habits, got back to exercising, uh, changed my upload schedule, like, all this and that. And um, just change to a different editing system, even like just changing it up, uh, switching it up. Uh, cause as a creative, like it's, it's it, it, like everyone gets uninspired. Everyone goes to those funks, you know? Yeah. That's just like a big thing to understand, I guess. Uh, and it definitely holds you back. Uh, if you put too much work before yourself and before play. Yeah. And that, that, that's another good point that sometimes <laughs> what used to be play w- when you do it more and more and you get really good at it and you're just doing it over and over again, especially when you're like setting big goals to like do a large quantity of a, of a specific thing, you get used to it and, it and it doesn't become a challenge anymore and it doesn't feel like play anymore. So I think that y- you nailed it. Like you have to change it up, even if it is just, you know, changing your upload schedule or, or figuring out a different ed- editing software, or just finding new ways to, to challenge yourself like you did with your uh, New Year's resolutions. Yeah, it's it's crucial. Like it has helped me so much to like live with a goal rather than just keep creating stuff like creating for a reason, creating for a goal. It's like absolutely vital as a creative. No, for sure. Um, you, you, you talk about this other thing, this <laughs> which I love. I always like try to uh, think of, about my future me. Uh, you talk about your past, <laughs> present, and future you, um, and kind of like looking at yourself lovingly uh, in, in in both directions. Like you want to set yourself, the, the future you up for success rather than failure. Um, can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, it's one, of my, it's one of my favorite ways to like look at life is you think about past you, present you, and future you. And I, I focus more on present me and future me. So like for instance, uh, I have to upload a video tomorrow uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So I think to myself, I was like, okay, after this interview, uh, future me would really appreciate <laughs> if I went and edited the video I have to put up and not be up to like 4 a.m. tonight editing again um, because that would suck. So in 20 minutes or so when this is over, I went, present me is going to like p- plug the hard drive in, edit that video to have up. So future me will be thankful for uh thankful for that and you can apply it to anything like like maybe you're in bed and you're like oh like crap my charger is downstairs but like man like future <laughs> you would hit you if you woke up and, and your phone's at like 15 percent. like get up oh, go get your charger so like true. <laughs> yeah it's like it's like apply it to absolutely everything and mm-hmm. then like um big things small things like it's it's crucial and you even apply it to like saving your money like hey, like I could go out and buy this like $12 teriyaki meal that's like bomb. But uh, number one, future me would feel like crap later. And number two, I could save that money. And you do like a few of those and all of a sudden you save like a hundred bucks. And it's just like thinking, always thinking about present me, future you, all that stuff. It's, It's a great, great mindset. And it's one I try to practice like in almost every decision. 
No, for sure. I, I love it. And I think that, yeah, going back to that excuses thing, I think that present me is the, the one that is the best at uh, making those excuses. Like present me is always a glutton. <laughs> like <laughs> present always... me is like, present me is the worst and the best person I know. So right. it's like, you really have to battle with him a lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you can get into that mindset of, of, you know, like I said before, like treating yourself lovingly, the, the future you lovingly, and even the past you as well, like forgiving your mistakes and your failures and just like moving on instead of like just living in that during your, your present me moments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just, uh, you know, asking yourself, okay, so like I have to do this hard thing right now. Present me has to do this hard thing or this annoying thing. Looking at the alternative, like what is present me doing? <laughs> like, yeah, no, j I'm just watching YouTube videos. I'm just essentially wasting time. Um, and just kind yeah. of trying to snap yourself out of that, that kind of bad mentality, you know? Yeah, no, it's so true. Like when you really start analyzing that and, like all of a sudden you have way more hours in your day than you had before. And like, mm. yeah, when you stop wasting time thinking about present you and future you and past you as well. And yeah, future you will thank past you for the decisions you made. So it's Absolutely. awesome. I love it. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's life changing. Literally, it's simple, but it's life changing. It really is. Yeah. If you can if you can actually hack it, you know, if you can actually get into that that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about your your actual style as a photographer. And um, so I, I guess there's like a point where uh, as any kind of creative person, especially as a photographer, where you things kind of, I guess, click and you just, you know, figure out like, oh, this is this is my style. This is awesome. And this is kind of where I want to go. Um, so I was wondering how early on did that happen for you? And uh, when did you kind of realize like um, this is like the Andrew T. Kearns style that I want to go for? Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of has an idea of what their style is. And currently my style, I feel like is more travel lifestyle kind of stuff. I'd like to put more emphasis on like, I guess, lifestyle is kind of what I do. Um, which if for those of you who don't really follow photography much listening to this, it's kind of more just like, it's hard to really place a definition, but yeah. like, like maybe you're traveling and just like the little, the little things that kind of make that moment, I guess is like, I guess is one way to explain it. It's um, just like more detail, maybe not a landscape, maybe not a portrait, but maybe like kind of a little somewhat combination of the two or a combination of like a scene with people in it. Like it's just a great style and it's uh, business on the business end. It's smart to do and also on a personal end, like I love doing it and I didn't really discover it too much until like more like the past few months, I'd say like it's uh it's really, really fun. It's you, instead of just shooting a landscape or just shooting portraits of people, you set up a little scene and, you know, like, uh, or maybe don't even set it up. Maybe it's just in the moment and mm. you just fire away. And, uh, I, I like, I personally don't set it up too much. Usually I, yeah, I just document what's there, document what's going on, uh, and just try to be in the moment with whoever I'm with or with what I'm doing and document it as authentically as possible, I guess. Uh, and then editing wise, like, oh man, I, my editing changes quite often, but I'm really settling into something I really like as of late. The way I look at editing is my, one of my biggest inspirations is a guy named Jared Chambers. And if you look at his photos, uh, he just has this like, completely like everything about his images like the one word to explain them is timeless like they're always it might not be this like perfect complex edit or whatever but it always like but beyond that it it fits it fits whatever that time is whatever that image is like it fits and that's what i really want to be doing i want to be stylizing my work to what is that time and place that image and yeah, I like, I think I've really been discovering that a lot more recently. Um, and I can't say I've shot a ton in that mindset lately, uh, cause I've just been rethinking a ton the past few weeks and, uh, re like the past few months really. And just thinking about my shooting and where I want it to be. And so I'm excited, like, yeah, for 2017 to really, really go out on all these ventures with, uh, that mindset. I love it. Now, now when yeah. you, when you do get, go out on these adventures and, 
you know, people can obviously, again, <laughs> look, watch your, you, I, I guess I'm obsessed with your YouTube channel, <laughs> I keep mentioning <laughs> hey. it, but it's a really good, uh, resource for people to, to watch somebody going through that kind of creative process and just going through, um, life on your, on your, on your hikes and, and just going out into nature. So when, yeah. when you do go out on these things, cause I know that there's obviously you have to do the behind the scenes things of, of, of filming yourself doing that as well, like to set up, but when you're actually there, What's the mindset? Are you like, all right, I want to be here experiencing life kind of like we've been talking about? Or are you like, I want to experience life, but I also want to find really good shots to take? Or is it just, I want to find really good shots to take and uh, maybe I'll document some of the adventure? Yeah, I'd say like, I definitely prioritize like being there first. Hmm. Um, And it used to not be that way. I used to like, I used to do the opposite. I used to be kind of like oh what's the cool shots i can get oh the sunset's amazing like let's just like fire away whatever but uh in reality like i feel like being present there is much more important and much more valuable because if you're just shooting the whole time you've probably taken way too many photos Hmm. and then you're also not putting as much thought as you should be into it so if you start putting in like you know your thoughts uh i guess for me, I I put in thought to it. I'm like, hey, here's a few shots I want. Let's get them and let's just enjoy the time. Um, but even then, like, like my my whole life revolves around a camera. So it's like it's like it's almost not even getting in the way of enjoying the great sunset. Like it's just a, almost an addition gotcha. to enjoying the great sunset or moment or the sunrise. Like it almost makes it that much better because my life is literally revolved around a camera so it definitely i think that's a that question is very person dependent Mm -hmm. um but at the same time it's a balance for sure like there are times where i'll just set down the camera and just enjoy the time so very person dependent very up to the photographer and the people around there really so it's cool and i guess that comes from from practice just like experiencing it in in trial and error and just figuring it out (laughs) figuring out yeah what, what you like and what you don't yeah, it's and it also uh, another big part is dependent on the time of the year because mm-hmm. you know like right now if I go catch a sunset I have like ten minutes like it, it's mm-hmm. so short it's so or whatever but like I mean you go to Iceland in the middle of summer and your sunsets are like two hours man you have all the time in the world like you could go to several different spots you could like do this and that or you could just sit at one spot and enjoy the sunset for like two or three hours you know it's like very dependent on time of the year and all that but. I think it's a lot of trial and error, figuring out what works for you. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and you, you are kind of blessed with the ability to, you know, travel and, and see different, different things. So that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Now you, you've set big goals for yourself, 200 videos. I know <laughs> there's 365 days in a year, but I know how many days can kind of slip away mm-hmm. when you set that kind of a goal. And you have this thing that you need to, like you said, upload by 8 a.m. Pacific tomorrow, even if you want to be nice to yourself. Whenever you have experiences where you're like, I have to do this, I've I've imposed this deadline for myself, um, but I really do not feel like doing it. (laughs) How do you get past that? How do you push yourself to to kind of get the work done? Well, past me, I used to I just would always like put it off and put it off, put it off. And all of a sudden I finish an edit at like four or 5 a.m. And I hate myself. <laughs> that's kind of what it was. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's definitely not the way to go because I would burn several hours just putting it off, like wasting time on my phone, like mm-hmm. all that stuff. And when you look back at past you, you're like, what the hell were you doing? Like you could have definitely like edited in that time. Like, come on, like, and then present you is mad at past you and future <laughs> you's tired kind of. It's a groggy day or whatever, but yeah, it's really the best, my best advice. Uh, actually I did this last night. I was just in this mood or I was like, ah, I'd, I'd like need to edit. I'm trying to update my portfolio on my website this week. I was in this mood last night where I just didn't want to edit. And I was like, ah, oh, like this sucks or whatever. Like, uh, and all I did was I just went on a run, a uh, quick run, took a shower, felt refreshed, went and like, uh, edited a few photos and went to bed at like, you know, 11, 11 30, and then woke up this morning and started my day. And I literally feel 20 times better, you know, and luckily I didn't have any deadlines to upload a video today or anything. But um, even then, just like going exercising, taking a shower, just doing something that 
other than like wasting your time on your phone, like do something undigital for a minute, like read a book, huh. go. I, I think, I, I mean, honestly, I keep coming back to the answer of exercise. Like it's, it, it's a game changer. Like it will change your, it can change your mood from bad to good so quick. Like it is helpful. So. Absolutely. And it's, it's funny that that dichotomy of, you know, like you saying that your camera is almost like an appendage, like it's a part of you yet. Sometimes it's so necessary to be go to, to get on digital, to just, you know, get out into nature just by mm -hmm. yourself and just to take care of your own body uh, as opposed to like kind of moving forward in that like kind of technological way, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's so important. Uh, before I let you go, I was wondering, do you have like a, a favorite book or YouTube channel, YouTube clip, um, movie, anything that you kind of draw inspiration from, uh, that maybe we could too? Yeah. I mean, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Casey Neistat, like he is, he's, uh, like, do you know who that is? Yeah. Casey's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So he, I've literally, like, he just ended his vlogs. He did about 500 some vlogs the past year and a half or so, which is insane every single day, uh, other than a week break he took in there for a vacation. Like he, he's the man, like he mm -hmm. has done something that no one else has. Definitely superhuman. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a mutant. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't get it. Um, but I have been starting my days. I've been watching, I, it's been freaking cold in Washington. So I've been running mm -hmm. at home on the treadmill uh, and instead of music, I'll just watch his vlogs. I'll, I'm rewatching them from the beginning and oh man, like it, it is the best way to start the day. He is just such an inspiring, hardworking human being. And then also, uh, actually, if I'm not watching him, I'll listen, be listening to Gary V. I'm not sure if you know of his podcast. I love Gary V. Yeah, dude. He, oh man, like, he, he basically, for those of you who don't know him, he has a show called Ask Gary V. He uh, answers a few questions and they might pertain to you, do they might not, but somehow they always pertain to you, no matter mm -hmm. what the question is. Like, he is so good at doing that. Um, so I strongly recommend those two guys, um, as well as like uh, Ben Brown. He's a vlogger as well. Uh, there's a guy named Fun for Louie. He's uh, I watch a few of his vlogs here and there. And then uh, another one, uh, one of my favorites is a girl named Sarah Dietschy. Uh, mm -hmm. She rhymes works. with Peachy. Rhymes with, yeah, you know, <laughs> she's just uh, I just enjoy her content because she she lives in New York, just like Casey. And uh, she just is like an inspiring person, hard worker. Like I'm just inspired by those like super hardworking people. Uh, it's really cool to see them out there and really cool to watch them and be like, oh, they're hardworking. Like I have no excuse not to be kind of so. Absolutely. I always love asking that question um, and getting like just a, a massive response. Like there's and that that's kind of the point of this podcast too. Like I interview lots of different people in different creative fields because we you all are going through it together. We're all kind of in it together with these things that hold us back, the things that are holding us back from being our best selves, whatever that is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that, like you said, with with all these people, there's there's so much value to gain from the struggles that you go through as a human being, not just like as a photographer, not just as an artist, not just as a writer. Um, it's just this in, internal struggle that we all go through. So I love all of these different inf inspirations. We'll, we'll post them all on the show notes page. And yeah, for people that listen to music while you're exercising or listen to music or I don't know, switch to podcasts. You listen to this podcast. There's so many other great podcasts and YouTube channels that you can subscribe to that you don't even know exist <laughs> that will change yeah. your life. You don't even need to watch TV anymore. Um, there's so much inspiration out there. Absolutely. I agree. Andrew, it's time for the final push. And this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone, grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today, and just give them your best words of advice and just push them to pursue their creative passions. Yeah. Yeah best advice I could ever give anyone is work hard, like work hard, uh, have big dreams, have goals, set a goal. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, I don't know who quoted it, but I know Casey Neistat quoted it. Uh, it's if you don't have a goal, you can't score, hmm. uh, super crucial. Just, yeah, go and work hard. Like no excuses anymore. Just get at it. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, no goal. You can't score. And set a big goal too, because even if you fall short of it, you'll, you'll still kind of score. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to do. Andrew, man, thank you so much for coming on the show and for giving us that push, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries.
Um, you can find Andrew on his website, which is andrewtkearns.com. That's K-E-A-R-N-S.com. On Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Snapchat, basically everything, he is mm-hmm. Andrew T. Kearns. And Andrew, thanks again, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, thank you to Andrew again. Remember, think less and do more. Four really effective words that can really change the game for you. We talk all the time on the show about all these resistances, all these things that hold you back, that hold me back, that hold all of us back. Uh, And most of the time, it's all in our head. These things that keep us away from our creative passion or, or really slow down the pace. And I think that there's no better words of advice than to just think less because the less you think the less you will uh, kind of be stuck in those traps and just do more just start doing it and worry about all those other things later and then you'll find once you stop uh, thinking and you start doing you will be in this kind of creative life you'll have created that lifestyle for yourself and all of a sudden you will be that person and that's when it's really important to start caring about past you present you and future you especially future you you can stop worrying about the the past you that was pretty lazy or scared to do whatever it is that you are currently doing, the present you is uh, attempting to do, to let yourself off the hook and, and forget about all that time that you wasted, and to also have respect for future you. Um, you know the work has to get done, so don't push it off until the early morning when you are going to be a miserable, tired future you to really kind of snap out of the, the, the bad habits and the time that present you wastes uh, for future you. I love just thinking that way. And like Andrew said, it is a game changer when you can get into that mindset for not just your creative passions, but life, money, relationships, or uh, even leaving your phone charger downstairs. It's a struggle I think that we all have. (laughs) Uh, But that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. And we will be here for you on Thursday if you need the push again. If you need some more inspiration and you have uh, already listened to all the episodes of Your Creative Push, definitely head to today's show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Andrew T. Kearns or yourcreativepush.com slash 186 to get links to all those guys that he talked about there's so many inspiring people out there and i'd be happy to uh kind of share the love um so that you can find that inspiration if you need it but go and get some amazing work done and we will see you next time if you need the push again i love y'all bye never miss a push head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast